What's going on guys, so in today's video, we'll be looking at why Rachel Nichols should no longer be an official NBA voter. Now what inspired this video was a soundbite from a recent episode of The Jump where Rachel Nichols, while speaking with Draymond Green, insinuated that LeBron James should be the MVP favorite because of where he's playing, that being Los Angeles, and because of the burden that he now has to carry in light of Kobe Bryant's tragic death. We've been talking about around the NBA, the discussion we were just having is about the MVP. Who do you see as the MVP of the league so far this year? I think right now it has to be Giannis. Uh, they got the best record in the league. He's playing great basketball. Uh, I think for a while, you kind of had Luka and LeBron right there in that uh, discussion. Luka's kind of went down with some injuries. And Giannis has been going at it the whole season. So I think right now he's definitely the MVP. And, you know, his play backs that statement up, but also their team record does as well. What do you see from LeBron here in this 17th season? Because there are people who say that he should be ahead in the MVP race just because of what he's doing, where he's doing it, and now, of course, with the burden, with everything that happened with that team and Kobe Bryant. I think LeBron... Death. What do you see from LeBron here in this 17th season? Because there are people who say that he should be ahead in the MVP race just because of what he's doing, where he's doing it, and now, of course, with the burden with everything that happened with that team and Kobe Bryant. I think Tragic LeBron, death. he's playing great. Man. Now, for those of us who pay close attention to the mainstream NBA sports media, we know that Rachel Nichols' narrative-based MVP voting is nothing new. In 2017, she had also stated on the jump that NBA voters do not award the MVP to the winningest player, but to the player who feels the most special. So because no one can win the regular season, we don't award the MVP to the winningest player. We award it to the person whose season feels the most special. We don't award the MVP to the winningest player. We award it to the person whose season feels the most special. And hey, now, unfortunately for Rachel Nichols, NBA history tells quite a different story. Because of the 64 MVPs that the NBA has had since the 1955-56 season, 86% of them have led their teams to one of the two best records in the NBA. While 65% of all MVPs have been players who led their teams to the best overall record in the league. So contrary to what Rachel Nichols would like the public to believe, NBA voters have generally awarded the MVP to the winningest player, that being the best player on the best team. However, the main clip that we'll be focusing on comes from another segment on the jump in 2017 and features Amin El Hassan and Steven Jackson, which is very important because of their backgrounds as it relates to the NBA. Amin El Hassan is a former NBA executive who worked for the Phoenix Suns while Steven Jackson is a retired NBA player of 14 years who was a part of the 2003 San Antonio Spurs who won the NBA championship, and he was also a part of the 2007 We Believe team who as the eighth seed beat the Dallas Mavericks in a first round upset. So needless to say, they are both knowledgeable and credible when it comes to their understanding of the NBA game. So let's listen in. Last year, Boston's David Bradley was on the all-defensive first team. This year, no love. Not even on the second team. Bradley was the 10th highest vote-getter, but did not accrue enough points. Players took notice on Twitter, starting with teammate Isaiah Thomas, who said, quote, how the hell is Avery Bradley not on the all-defensive team? That's crazy. We'll direct the point there. C.G. Mm. McCollum, someone needs to be slapped. How Avery Bradley slap? ain't made one team. Out of here and Joel Embiid with this. By the way, Avery Bradley not making at least first team all defense is so crazy oh. to me. I want to know who these voters are shaking my head. CJ Cust on Twitter? CJ is the best. Stack, what do you think? If if uh, Andre Robinson made it and Bradley didn't make it, they got the vote wrong. I mean, I, Robinson gets a lot of props for defense, but I haven't seen him lock down or stop anyone. Uh, Avery Bradley takes he takes on challenges every night. He actually does stop guys. We've seen it, not just the regular season, but in playoffs. There's no way he shouldn't be on one of those teams. I, I think they got it wrong. I think they got it wrong. What do you think of me? Yo, uh, they got they definitely got that wrong. They got a lot of things wrong. I, look. Now the first portion of this clip deals with NBA players on Twitter voicing their displeasure over Avery Bradley not making any of the all defensive teams, which also puzzled Amin El Hassan and Steven Jackson. However, what they don't know is that Rachel Nichols is one of those voters who kept Avery Bradley off of her all-defensive team ballot. And at no point during this segment does she ever mention this. 
But before breaking down exactly why that is, let's move on to the second half of this clip, which is even more telling. Uh, they got, they definitely got that wrong. They got a lot of things wrong. I, look, Danny Green, I, 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 I like, he's a good defensive player, but the idea that Klay Thompson, Avery Bradley, Paul George, uh, Jimmy Butler, None of these dudes made all defense? Hold up, what you said Danny Green ain't for? Danny Green made all defense. I'm one of the teams. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And when you talk about Robertson, you talk about a guy who literally does one thing. And he's he's not he should be the best defensive player in the world if all of his energy is going to just defense, right? But but he doesn't He's not that great defensively. He's a good defensive player, but not better than any of those teams. Okay, so I almost I, walked off. I'm sorry. I almost walked off. Danny Green made all defensive all, teams. All defensive oh, teams. Over all them names. You hear names no no more award shows. It's over. <laughs> We're boycotting it. No more. Dan, I'm, oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. I know that the player's first instinct is to say who are these voters, but the, the problem is, and we've talked about this before, when these votes are handed to any other group, the, the decisions are more skewed, they're worse, they're out of whack. So is the issue the voters or is the issue that we don't have stats for well, I, I, I'm Now this part of the segment highlights Amin El Hassan and Steven Jackson's disbelief over Danny Green being selected to the all-defensive team over players like Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Avery Bradley, and Paul George. What must also be mentioned is that Steven Jackson has played alongside Danny Green as a member of the San Antonio Spurs and against him. So he does have great first-hand experience. But much like the first clip, Rachel Nichols, who had Danny Green on her all-defensive team ballot, chose to remain silent during the whole segment instead of defending her vote, and even chose to laugh whenever Steven Jackson would express his disapproval of the voters. Not better than any of those teams. I, okay, said so I almost I, walked off. I I'm sorry. I almost walked off. Danny Green made all defensive all, teams. All defensive oh, teams. Over all them names. You hear names? No, no more award shows. It's over. <laughs> We're boycotting it. No more. Dan, I'm, oh my God. Oh my goodness. I By know the, that the players. And you never have a time where people with a lot of common sense will put Danny Green on defensive teams. <laughs> I, yeah, I messed up his whole day today. <laughs> and we're gonna go to break. <laughs> And you never have a time where people with a lot of common sense will put Danny Green on defensive team. <laughs> I, yeah, I messed up his whole day today. <laughs> and we're gonna go to break. <laughs> now the issue isn't with who Rachel Nichols necessarily voted for, because the all defensive teams only have 10 spots available. The issue is that she can't actually defend her ballot because she's not someone who has the ability to analyze the game and break down the intricacies and nuances of what's happening out on the court which is why her being an official voter doesn't make any sense. But this should come as no surprise because prior to 2016, which is when The Jump first aired, Rachel Nichols was never known for being an NBA media personality. In fact, she used to work as a correspondent for SportsCenter, Sunday NFL Countdown, as well as other ESPN shows. She then left ESPN and joined CNN in 2013 and started covering the NFL, Major League Baseball, college football as well as college basketball, boxing, golf, and even NASCAR. She only made basketball her main focus upon returning to ESPN in 2015 after two years at CNN where her show called Unguarded not only premiered to very low ratings, but was then canceled shortly after posting a 14-year time slot low for CNN in the 25 to 54 demographic. So for her to be an official NBA voter, when she has no basketball background, not only makes a mockery of the other legitimate voters, but it also puts into question the standards that the NBA holds many of these voters to. Especially since Rachel Nichols was allowed to continue to vote after she was caught lying on television about her all-defensive team selection. So the question now becomes, will the NBA continue to be lenient towards someone who has openly admitted to using her emotions, feelings, and even a player's death to justify her MVP ballot? embarrassing incident for a Rockets team that's frankly already had its share this season. I mean, can the Rockets equipment staff find something for its players to spray their hands with that would make them play defense? 
or would maybe keep its best player out of the tabloids for sleeping around on a Kardashian? Because that's really what would be helpful. Or would maybe keep its best player out of the tabloids for sleeping around on a Kardashian? Because that's really what would be helpful. In your mind, is he an all defensive team caliber guy? Yeah, but I mean, all defensive team is voted on by people who don't really know the game. Uh, how much attention has, da- has uh, Damian uh, uh, Lillard? Lillard, thank you. Uh, getting he's he's had one of the most dominant months in NBA history, especially for a guard, and he did not get Player of the Month or Player of the Week. That's insane. Yeah, it is, and that just shows you that it's a very subjective thing, and there is so definitely bias around, and no question, some people are influenced by it. And yeah, and you. And here's my thing, and, and the people that you're talking about, Rachel Nichols has so much qualification to be an FBA expert, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she does. Yeah, right. Do so right, because she's, she's, I, I why? Her, I she's covered because she happened to be someone that got lucky enough to get hired to be able to no, cover I, NBA basketball. I follow I mean, your sarcasm. I follow your sarcasm. Yeah, I follow now. my I, sarcasm. I mean, I do, seriously. I do, yeah. And it's the same thing with so many of the other talking heads who are out there.